Welcome back to Misfit HQ, Sherman Hunter today with a tutorial on how to ski erg effectively. Now, unlike the rower and the bike, where you're really comfortable a lot of time, use it consistently in your training, the ski erg can create a lot of problems due to inefficiency in the stroke. Now, we're gonna start first and foremost with the setup. When it comes to the damper and whatnot, a lot of athletes are gonna live very similar to their rowing damper. Some elect to go one or two notches up, but for today's purposes, we're gonna live somewhere between a four and a five. Second, we're gonna talk about setup. We need to make sure that Hunter can bend forward at the waist without taking a header off the screen. So all I have you do, Hunter, is just hinge forward at the waist to make sure he's clear of the display. Taller athletes are gonna to have to be further back on the platform, whereas shorter athletes can be a little bit closer. But again, we need to be able to bow forward without hitting our header off that screen. Now what I'm gonna have Hunter do is reach up and grab those handles, and he's gonna go step back into position. Now, the major problem that we see in the skier happens here in the initiation of the stroke. A lot of times we'll see an athlete reach their arms up overhead to start the stroke, and then the first thing they do is bend the elbows, pull the handles down, and follow through with the chest. Now the problem here is we're violating a major component of CrossFit, which is core to extremity. If Hunter initiates with the extremities and not the core, he's going to be far less efficient on this machine. So the alternative here is Hunter, go ahead and step back in position, reach those arms up overhead. We want to create length and ensure that this joint is closing before his arms close on that ski erg. So as Hunter goes to initiate the stroke, the first thing we're going to see is that his hips shoot backward and he creates length from handle to hip. This length allows you to create power and whip, which makes you more powerful when you stroke on the skier. Go ahead and stand back up, Hunter. Now, once he has created that length by pushing the hips back and getting those arms overhead, you'll notice that his chest drops. But if he stayed straight arm the entire time, he wouldn't be very powerful. This is not a very powerful position. You'd feel it very quickly in your lats where you have no power and your screen would reflect that. So once Hunter has created that length by creating torso first and hips back, we're going to make sure that he begins to bring those elbows in towards the hips and that he falls through the arms. Again, making sure first that we have length and then we are powerful following through the bottom of the stroke. So Hunter, if you would, could you just give us like three powerful strokes? Now again, if we do this in slow-mo, go ahead and relax for a second, Hunter. If we were to see this in slow-mo, we would again see hips shoot back, we have length from handle to hip, and as the torso drops, he then squeezes the lats in, elbows come down, and he follows through. Now that's half the stroke. We need to make sure that we can replicate it from rep to rep across a distance or a calorie amount. So we're gonna notice on this next bit, as Hunter finishes his stroke, upon finishing, he's going to open his hips all the way up, and return the handle to the same position they started from. If Hunter only gets his handles this high as opposed to this high, he has a lot less cord to work with and a lot less power as a result, meaning he's gonna be inefficient. So Hunter, go ahead and give us, could you do some short strokes first? This is what we do not wanna see as you go through your cadence. Go ahead, Hunter. Notice that the handles are only getting about halfway up as opposed to where they could be, which is way up here. So go ahead and relax for a second, Hunter. He's gonna do the same thing, but now we're gonna make sure that these handles return essentially back to where they came from without jamming them back into the machine. So Hunter, when you're ready, go ahead and reach back up. Good, go ahead and relax. So a quick recap on how to do this correctly. First and foremost, get the proper setup. Damper should be similar to your rower. Your feet need to be far enough away so that you can bend forward the waist without taking a header off the screen. Then once you have that, you're gonna reach up and grab the handle, step back into position. You're gonna make sure that you initiate by getting nice and tall first, shooting the hips backwards and keeping length from handle to hip. Once you've created that length, you're then going to squeeze the armpits, bringing the elbows down to be in a nice, powerful, strong position and finish by following through towards the floor and then returning nice and tall in every single stroke. So as Hunter goes through, let's call it just five strokes, we're gonna notice that he gets through all those points every single time. Good, one more and relax. Now, if you go through these points of performance and you still realize there's a huge gap between your capacity on a rower and the capacity on a skier, well, it takes time to develop this, but eventually the splits that you hold on the rowing machine should be very similar to the splits that you can hold on the skier. And in order to do that, you need to be efficient. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.